guys welcome back to the channel we are hopping back on the 07 again today we are going to be showing you i say we we actually have company today zach is here so uh we are going to be showing you guys how to delete your heat exchanger that's right delete your heat exchanger off of your uh, really this will cover most of your third gen uh, dodges if you don't know what a heat exchanger is it is this giant box back there if you guys look you see that black hose you see the dipstick and then you see that like uh, kind of silver um, square back there that is your heat exchanger now for a word of caution if you live in a cold climate Midwest upper Northeast um, all of your like uh, Northwest, like Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, all that. Uh, I'm not gonna say that this is the best idea, but you still can delete it. The big thing is don't beat on your transmission until the fluid warms up. So this heat exchanger has two jobs. First job, it heats the fluid up. Second job is it does act as an auxiliary secondary transmission fluid cooler um, if the trans temp goes above the engine temp so the reason why we get rid of this is two reasons number one i just don't care actually i do it for three reasons number two it's all up in our way and number three uh it does allow us to run the transmission fluid temperature a lot cooler so that's where we're at on this a uh, pretty easy process uh realistically you got to drain the coolant out um, and the reason why we do that is we have to pull a coolant hose off of the block. Uh, the coolant hose comes out right about here, goes to the heat exchanger. And then you have another line that goes from the uh, heat exchanger, wraps around the block, and it's that steel line. And this is the one that everyone always has all those cold leaks and uh, the hose will crack and stuff. You guys can see that joint there so that steel line goes all the way back it then goes up to your heater core comes up and then drops down right there um, so what i do when i reroute this line or delete the heat exchanger we will rotate that fitting down and then the hose will come across over and connect to our heat exchanger or our uh, heater core excuse me and then over here, they'll no longer be coolant. The heat exchanger will be gone, all good things. So uh, in order to do this, you need a coolant plug for the block. You gotta remove the hose and the line off. Uh, we will be making our new transmission lines as well in this video. Um, there are a couple kits out there that let you use quick disconnects on your factory third gen cooler. I hate them. They break off, they get brittle, I hate them. So we will actually be converting everything over to AN lines. And then uh, the other thing you need is this really good high temperature silicone hose. You can get it at your Napa or if you uh, have the forethought, you can actually order it on Amazon. Um, but you want this blue hose. This is, this is the good stuff here. So that's what we're working on today. All right, so to do this project, we have this derail cooler, uh, 15876. I don't know if I would order this one because this is actually a 10 in and out. Um, luckily for us in stock, we have the 10 to 8 adapters right here. And I might actually have the O-Ring Boss to Dash 8. I just, I didn't, once I saw these, I stopped looking. We have these vibrant compression fittings for half inch tube. There is your part number. This allows you to crimp onto the factory cooler um, and then go to a dash eight AN here as well. And then we have our run of the mill Amazon special eight AN line kit. Um, on this, when you do it, you're going to run a 90 or 45 forward to the front of the truck, a straight into the cooler, a straight out of the cooler, all the way back to your rear mounted cooler usually it's like a straight in and then a straight out maybe some 45s and then going back into the trans it should be a 90 into the rear um again i'll show you guys all that but this is kind of the stuff you need to if you want to delete your heat exchanger and also add an auxiliary cooler at the same time which is our goal here i'm not sure if we'll get this wired in today 
but it'll at least be back there. So let's go ahead and get to work. First thing we gotta do, start draining all the coolant. And uh, while the coolant's draining, we will get the transmission lines removed. guys one of the nice parts about being a pack rat is that you have a lot of cool visual diagrams so this is the back of a 5.9 engine uh this is where the heat exchanger is located all right so transmission bolts up here heat exchangers here that coolant port that we're talking about is right here this is your coolant uh line and it goes out comes to the heat exchanger from the heat exchanger it goes across the back and then comes forward. So, also, for those of you guys that are interested, Zach is in the part out game now. He's no longer a mechanic. So he's really good at tearing stuff apart. Really good at losing everything. That's fair. On a scale of one to 10, how confident are you in the transmission work performed by me last night? Very. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Okay. So just a quick rundown. You guys always like to know what's in the shop. Uh, we have a, it's actually Saturday. L Mel came in here, uh, crank no start. Uh, we're gonna replace the fuel filter housing. This was actually kind of like an emergency call. Six, seven Cummins in here for a blown head gasket. Uh, and wow guys, just look at how little has to come apart. Case in point on Duramaxes, we had the six, four busted up pipes and a leaking gearbox up pipes are done gearbox is next we have this truck guy bought it um thought he had an ats trans he did not have an ats trans he does not have an ats trans now either he has one of ours i painted it i gotta put the valve body in it um, i just put it over here so it was out of the way got it all sealed up um it is painted ready to go 
Uh, he already had a billet flex plate, so he saved the money there. Already had a deep pan, which is not on it yet because the valve body's not in it, but this is one of our WLT stage one, 650, 700 horsepower trannies. Um, billet input shaft, all the good clutches, uh, all the billet, you know, lever strut anchor, accumulator, second gear servo, you know, the whole shebang there. Um, and we'll get this guy patched up. And uh, yeah, his axe just plugging away. There's a uh, time lapse currently going right there. Zach's destroying this time lapse. I'm gonna have to edit it so much because he keeps walking away, but we'll get there. All right, and uh, I guess I kinda got my answer on why it ran so hot when we towed last time. Looks like my transmission cooler is leaking and it's now plugged up with grime and it has plugged up a good bit of our radiator as well. So we will get these lines disconnected here. Um, and get this pulled out and swap in my brand used one and uh, keep chugging along. Well guys, this has escalated quite quickly. Um, so radiator, we're just gonna replace it. Intercooler, we're just gonna replace it. Transmission cooler, also replaced. Five nine balancer, gone. I'm gonna go ahead and take this time to replace my belt tensioner. This pulley for a six seven. This for my fancy fleece one. And then I think I'm also gonna order my steering box. So back to what we were working on, your heat exchanger. And boy, I'll tell you what, you can see it now. Look at that old girl sitting back there. Got a nice view of it. Look behind those fuel lines. Right there, heat exchanger. Um, so, you know, we do, we do this for you guys. So you get better views. I'm really contemplating on <clears throat> just putting that six seven motor over there in since zach still hasn't paid me for it <sighs> dude i mean we're literally almost there i mean a turbo a wire harness and a trans should, should we i don't know just do it mm. or you wouldn't does this mean you just are never going to be able to pay me for it no <laughs> in case you were curious guys that's a yes all right all right, guys, so we are currently under the truck. Um, you remember our full manual valve body installation. Uh, here's another look at our heat exchanger. You can see we have the one line that goes from here and it comes down, goes to this side of the trans. This line from here goes forward. And then you have a line that comes from there and comes back to the heat exchanger. So what Zach is going to do is get rid of our factory transmission lines, uh, as well as remove the heat exchanger off the block uh, and then the coolant's drained. Once we get all that out of the way, we will get to work on running our new lines. I promise I will show you. Uh, I have to go run out, so Zach is gonna be doing the work here. I'm thinking our second transmission cooler <clears throat> will probably go like in this area here, or we'll put it where the spare tire's at. I haven't made up my mind yet. Once we get it laid out, I will show you guys um, once we get everything out. Okay, so a little time has passed, but heat exchanger is out. I had to go run and get a bunch of parts. Zach got to work on that. Now the only thing left is the plug in the block. We just cut the lines. Um, and then we got ourselves a new gearbox because it's leaking out of the sector shaft. And then like we had originally talked about, I did get myself a new radiator as well. Um, that way it's, it's just fresh, ready to go. Uh, and then I did decide I'm going to put a six, seven damper stock damper on here. Um, and then we will swap this pulley out for a five, nine one. And although fluid dampener is preferred, I do not have one and I do have a used six, seven one. So the OEM 671s are much better, in my opinion, than the OEM 59. What happens is this inertia ring here will break down. And uh, I've seen them fly off, I've seen them break, I've seen them shake trucks. So, realistically, if you have a 591 and you find somebody selling a 671 cheap, you can do that. But I'm going to try and keep on the video at hand, which is the heat exchanger. And here you guys can see. That coolant passage, we now have the plug in there. 
again for reference we're kind of like i'll kind of direct you up like right under that fuel line he did finally settle on a transmission cooler location we have plenty of clearance on our drive shaft uh and i've had this part of the drive shaft break the slip yoke um so the should let the shaft just fall straight down um worst comes to worst if we end up doing anything wild with this truck uh what we'll end up doing is just putting a uh loop on it but this will give us enough clearance to do two 90s uh here and here to go over there unfortunately i do not have the right fittings these are a 10 o-ring boss which we have 10 to 12 and then i have 12 to 10 adapter i do not have 8 10 to 12 or 10 to 8 and then by then the fitting would be in the frame rail so that is where it's going to sit uh just some one inch bar stock here or not bar stock uh, square stock uh we will weld it on to the cross member this is the skid plate cross member it's not really a cross member it's kind of just like some chinky steel but uh, i have mounted them here before the only downside to this mount is if you do have to take the tranny in and out a lot uh, it can be a pain, but I'm planning on keeping this tranny in for a while. Uh, the one inch spacer gives us plenty of room to suck air up into the cooler. Um, and then going down the road, it'll kick it out of the way here. Um, and then you do have uh, the ability, you guys can see here with the T case, we got about a half inch. Um, and it keeps it nice and tight. And if I ever do decide to run a spare tire, um, that is not tied up there. I also don't have the super long lines. So this is where it'll end up. I'm not going to weld it and everything right now. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just loop the trans cooler line uh, right about here. That way I can cut it and install it into the transmission cooler. Uh, it'll be a little bit of fluid loss, but not terrible. So with that being said, what we're going to do here is take you guys up front. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do our lines. Our lines are gonna be pretty simple. This one will be a 90 and it'll go backwards. This one, uh, we are also going to do a 90, kind of come up and then go forward to the trans cooler. And then that line from the trans cooler will come back to our uh, auxiliary cooler. So that'll be how it's done. I'm gonna get to work on this, but really the hard part of getting the heat exchanger out, all the coolant drained, everything else, that's honestly done. Um, I do need to run the heater core line, but you guys can see there, she is officially gone. And it really frees up a lot of room. You can get a lot more light in here, so to speak. Uh, and then on the trans cooler lines, I tend to try to cheat them over this way, away from the engine. Okay, so for those of you doing that at home, quarter inch on one side, dash eight on the other. This is the steel fitting that PDD offers. Very nice piece, honestly. Um, we have a 5 16 drill bit, fits through. Now, on this aluminum fitting, I also drilled it to fit through. Now, for reference, uh, this is a Russell fitting, this is a Vibrant fitting, and this isn't like a stab at Vibrant. But you guys can see here, it goes through but stops so it actually is you guys can see there yeah we'll give them the benefit of the doubt no not that size but anyway you guys get the gist basically if you're going to do this with these lines with the aluminum fittings you need to be drilling out there we go. That's like a perfect fit right there. So it's now 5 16 It started life as 7 30 seconds? No. 1764. So realistically, 1764, 5 16 You know, you do the math. We gained about 364 worth of food flow through that fitting. So again, nothing wrong with aluminum. They are a little bit weaker when you drill them out, but realistically, you're going to crack the case uh, long before I feel like you crack this fitting. Um, but again, 
that's just my little trick to you. Picks up a little bit of flow, a little fluid flow. And then we're gonna go ahead and attach these into the transmission with our 545. Now, I'm gonna not do this under the truck, but I'm gonna tell you right now, the front fitting by the second gear band, I'm not gonna say you can go Hercules on it, but you can snug it. This one, crazy, crazy, crazy soft. It will split the back side of the transmission case. And what I mean by that is if you look here, you know, you got a lot of meat on the bone in this part of the case, pretty strong. Here, it's a tapered thread. So as you tighten it, okay? So we're there, I'd probably give it maybe hand tight plus like a quarter turn. If you go too tight, you will crack that housing right here. There is a way to fix it, but most of the time, People go so Hercules, they crack it so bad that Sonic's repair kit doesn't even work. So again, just a heads up. All right, and here you can see our uh, tranny lines are ran now. Actually, this one kind of got a little twisted up, but they are ran right along the frame rail and they come up pretty decently right there. We'll be able to zip tie them to right there and then they are terminated. Um, when you think about your intercooler pipes sit about right here. So that should leave us just enough line right there to hook them up. Um, I'm gonna refrain from hooking this up just yet. We'll leave this open. Uh, and now I'm gonna go ahead and take care of some of the other miscellaneous things. Um, one thing I did notice while working on this is our water pump is NFG. So I'm gonna get the water pump pulled, belt tensioner pulled. Uh, I'm gonna swap this out for a five nine or a six seven fan pulley, excuse me. Get our dampener switched out for a six seven. And I'm gonna go ahead and start working on our gearbox as well. Um, I forgot to get a water pump before uh, the store is closed. So we're going to work on some other stuff and I'll finish this video up um, in the morning. But basically, all we got, once all that's done, we'll put the radiator back in, put the intercooler back in, hook up the intercooler pipes, get our transmission uh, cooler hooked up, and that's about it. So
Okay, so we took advantage of not having the water pump. We got our new belt tensioner on, new belt, our fleece pulley on, 6-7 fan pulley, our 6-7 uh, damper, factory bolts. We have our new uh, CarQuest Special Advanced Auto Parts $200 steering box. And our training lines are ran up here. I also ripped the coolant line out. This is the part that goes behind the block. Uh, it hooks to the heater core right there. I still have to take that line out, but we'll get there. Basically what we'll do is disconnect that heater core line at the firewall and run it to this outlet right here, uh, which we do have to change out to a different size, but no big deal. And uh, yeah, guys, slowly chugging along, not having the water pump really kind of screwed me tonight because uh, I don't want to fight it tomorrow with all the stuff in the way. So we'll just wait for that. And then from there, we'll put the whole front end back together. So it is the next day. Um, as you guys could tell here, we did do some painting. Uh, just wanted to pretty it up. I got the new water pump, belt, the tensioner, all that stuff. Uh, gearbox we put in last night, if you recall. Now we are going to go ahead and throw the front end back on so we can finalize our training cooler lines and finish up this video. So I'm gonna get you guys set up and we'll throw it all back on. The only new parts, we are gonna put a new intercooler in as well as a new radiator too. I'm trying not to show you guys up here in this corner. We have our uh, new trans brand used trans cooler, rather our new radiator. Put our fan back on, power steering cooler back on, and you guys can see here the lines sit in the factory channel like they're supposed to. Two uh, dash eight straights go down. I grab that power steering line. I go under the steering shaft, and then I go right there by the fuel lines, and uh, she's all done. This is what it looks like. Now you don't have those pesky quick disconnect clamps, nothing like that. Uh, you can actually still get to these lines through this area right here. You just pry the fender well out and you can actually get to them. But I've honestly, since I've started using this setup, never had an issue. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a big fan of them. That's gonna be a wrap on deleting your heat exchanger. So uh, we looped the trans cooler lines uh, for the auxiliary cooler, because I don't have the fittings yet. Um, I'll probably just throw that in off camera, but it's all welded in. I actually decided last night to weld it in. We have our front cooler swapped out for one that doesn't leak. Um, we have our AN lines and all of our coolant passages done. Uh, we did the heater hose line around the fender well, and that's it. That's all you gotta do to delete your heat exchanger. Much easier with the transmission out, but I did not have time. So I paid the price, we got it out. Big thanks to Zach for helping us. Hopefully this answers your questions. I will do a driving video when we're done with this other video I'm shooting as well. And uh, I'll give you guys my impressions, what the trans 
temperature looks like, stuff like that. So hopefully you like this one. Drop a comment down below. Subscribe if you are not already. And as always, guys, I'll catch you all on the next one.